the impact on recycled manure solids on bedding. We have more and more of this in Quebec right now. We could say that overall, it's a question of revaluing vegetable fiber that was not was not digested by the cows. So we're taking the uh, product, drying it, and doing composting. After that, we use it. And so this seems to be promising. However, we don't have a whole lot of scientific information on this. And we realize that most producers have a very uh, unique way of producing this. And so the goal of the project was to add to scientific knowledge, to study this bedding, and to uh, better understand what's happening for producers. Today, we have mammary gland health and quality of milk. For mammary gland, what we did was we worked with 26 farms, the 60 uh, farms um, as well. And for a year, we asked producers to take a milk sample from each portion whenever there was mastitis and to bring it to the lab so that we could identify the agent responsible for this. So over the course of the year, we got 1,144 1, samples that we uh, used in the lab and that we then identified. We compiled all of the clinical mastitis codes that we had over the course of the year. And I standardized this here for a herd of 100 cows for a duration of a year, the duration of the study. What you can see here is that you've got the red farms and they had a number of cases here similar to this and recycled in blue. Yes, well, I'm looking at your two curves and they're almost perfectly superimposed, yes. We the farms uh, 16 and 14 cases, so no significant difference. So somebody who is on recycled manure bedding, uh, there there's nothing different than for uh, straw, right? Yes, exactly. That's good news for producers. If you recall, we had some concerns, though, around the type of clinical mastitis that we would have. Is it the same thing? Yes, exactly. The pathogen portrait. So, yes, we need to look at all of this. Here we've got the main agents involved in intramammary um, uh, infection. So we have Kipsilia pneumonia. For example, we had uh, they had seven times more chances of having uh, uh, infection due to this bacteria. Okay, so we see that this is recycled and down to the bottom, it's the straw and the incidences are very much lower, right? So these are severe mastitis, right? Yes, very severe mastitis that can compromise the animal as life or the portion affected. Certainly, it's dairy production over the course of the year. And so it comes up in the herd. Yes, I think a lot of uh, cows are culled after that, are they not? Yes. And what happens is that it, it talks about the reports that we had gotten from veterinarians and um, breeders. Yes, so veterinarians and breeders were saying, well, there's an epidemic in um, these recycled uh, products, but uh, it was never confirmed. Confirmed. So this is very important uh, data that needs to be shared with, uh, with producers. Yes, absolutely. And so in the context of the project, I looked at the impact of betting on quality of milk and its cheese processing. I quantified bacteria that's resistant to heat in the reservoirs because, as we say, uh, milk usually is subject to heat treatment like pasteurization before being processed. The good news is that in terms of bacteria, sporulated bacteria uh, with very high resistance to heat, we didn't see any differences between milk from farm using recycled manure uh, bedding or straw manure um, uh, bedding. And so we, could, we were able to adjust for um, thermal resistance. We did, however, um, identify more uh, streptococcus in the uh, recycled manure bedding. Some, as some of these uh, products can cause some problems in cheese making, we decided to test their impacts during model cheese, cheddar cheese, fresh cheddar cheese production. We can now follow the effect of, of uh, strains in the different uh, steps of the product, uh, but on a, on a small scale. The tested strains did not show any negative effect during production of fresh cheese. This said, the strains watched their population grow, and some even had uh, some tolerances. 
which means that there could be a negative effect during ripening because salt is used to control growth. And finally, the proteolytic strains, in other words, the ones that degrade, degrade milk uh, casein, um, uh, risk uh, modifying the taste of the cheese because proteolysis allows for the production of a different flavor. In sum, there's some good news. The For the recycled manure uh, bedding does not have more bacteria. This said, the point to, to monitor and is the thermal, re, uh, thermal resistance to Enterococcus and Streptococcus and the control of some pathogens during the production of recycled manure bedding. This uh, requires new research uh, avenues that are very interesting. There are a number of, our, of other results that we were not able to present this, this, uh, this year today. We tried to talk about the procedures that farmers used for recycled um, manure bedding. Are they used to control different microorganisms? Well, there are a lot of microorganisms that are non desirable and not controlled by these processes. But what we did note is that there was probably no, uh, there was usually uh, no organ, there was no uh, activity in the rest reservoirs and so that probably won't have an impact on consumers uh, but for um, undesirable microorganisms for the health of the cow that's one thing and maybe for farm workers as well so we wanted to thank the different people who made the project possible for financing Nova Le, Kribig, uh, NSERC mm, Technology and uh, Natural Research. Dr. Annie Freshet got uh, uh, um, so, grants, for, grants from Agria, and the project was undertaken in partnership with different members of the Ablet Group, so University of Montreal, obviously, but as you have seen, we had some really strong uh, collaboration with people from the University of Laval and from Black.